first of all, I really want to say I thank the organizer and specifically the kind invitation from Barry a lot just to bring me in to this uh, panel. And uh, I, uh, for the previous two sessions, I have learned so much from various scholars, uh, the scholars from everywhere in the world about uh, uh, BRR. And then for myself, I want to just to talk about, uh, focus on my uh, key area, African. Uh, and then just to uh, using such a title, idea shift, how Belt Road Initiative how, has been uh, promoting China uh, African cooperation. Um, as a scholar uh, in China, we very often feel uh, a bit uh, uh, curious why uh, people from abroad uh, see uh, BR, BR are a bit negative and then rather from a, a kind of a suspicious perspective. And then for us, uh, specifically from an African perspective, I mean, doing African studies in China, I actually already say lots of uh, positive things. And um, I will just uh, give my conclusion in the final part about uh, what do I mean by idea shift. But uh, basically, I think uh, uh, as a scholar, we are also aware about this kind of a big differences between insider and the outsider perspective. For me, probably you can call me a uh, kind of an insider perspective. I think I have uh, more opportunity to discuss with uh, uh, Chinese players on the ground and also Chinese policy makers uh, in the government. So probably that's uh, how I could claim but otherwise, I think uh, we still have uh, more need to uh, really exchange and then uh, to try to, uh, to sort of uh, make the gap in, instead of just to let this outsider, insider pers perspective uh, so, look so different. Um, my uh, first... Uh, my first uh, uh, idea. Can you, can you make it into slideshow so the oh, yes, is bigger yes. on the screen? Is it better? Yeah. It is okay. Better. Yes. Um, I want to start from this uh, timelines of uh, uh, BRR uh, changes to look at uh, where's Africa first. Of course, if if we back look back 2013, we 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 don't say Africa at all. And even 2014, there is no Africa. And then till uh, the uh, beginning of 2015, we slightly to say the possibility to say Africa, such as uh, um, if we go to uh, this talk by uh, Xi Jinping himself, uh, and when he mentioned in 2015, the beginning, he talked about how uh, China is uh, BRR is not China the solo, but uh, kind of inspiring uh, chorus for everyone in the world. And specifically, he emphasized not only those Asian countries, but also he emphasized all China as a friend, partners in the world. So that's a kind of a possibility time for us to start to look at uh, uh, Africa, and. Uh, uh, this is uh, why I started. I should. Uh, I want to ask uh, this kind of a puzzle. Where is Africa? And uh, uh, Jiang Ming, uh, the special envoy, 2015, while he was uh, receiving um, the former chairman of African uh, Union Commission, uh, the Lamini Zuma, she, he made a kind of a talk about. Uh, uh, he does think this One Belt, One Road initiative has some similarity spirit with Africans' uh, uh, vision. So this is uh, also potential kind of a South-South cooperation, new approaches. And uh, uh, of course, we all know that if we, we, we look in depth about the so-called five connectivities, we know that almost everything already happened in Africa by then. And then uh, 2015, in the beginning, 
Professor Justin Lin already started to make lots of talk about uh, Belt Road uh, and African Africa, so called in Chinese, Yida Yilu Jia Yi Zhou. So, this kind of a jumping, this kind of a, uh, idea uh, has been shared everywhere. And uh, he, uh, at those moments, he, uh, he, he made many, many public talk just to champion this idea that Belt Road Initiative should have this African continent to, together, to be together. And his main reason has been, first, uh, if uh, China's main trends about Belt Road Initiative is infrastructure. African is where really need this kind of uh, help. Secondly, he emphasized the but two partners also uh, the best combination, uh, specifically due to China is uh, uh, trying to offshore its industry and Africa is the best place to receiving labor intensive industry offshore. Uh, and um, he, of course, raised uh, this idea that potentially there would be 80 million uh, labor uh, created this kind of opportunity for African continent. Of course, he also raised the idea that there might be lots of risks for Africa, uh, for China to move in not only Africa, but also the whole Belt Road in, uh, areas. And then he talked about politics, social culture, background differences, so on and so forth. And then also he reads one solution potentially about uh, how different Chinese government sh organizations should, coordinate, should be coordinated, which is uh, exactly the CEDAC, which we have seen since two years ago finally established as a China's development organization, cooperation agency. So other Chinese African scholars like me, myself, we all have been uh, doing a lot during those um, period of time to champion, to push the Chinese government to really bring African to the board about uh, BRR and then our basic idea has been, I just quote uh, Huey Jones talk here. He uh, similarly just uh, trying to emphasize how African will be benefited more from this Belt Road Initiative uh, inclusions. And um, of course, this idea rehearsal of the corporation already has been raised about what uh, China is do, has been doing in Africa exactly the same idea that BRR would have done uh, in other uh, areas. So that's why uh, BRR Africa should be really included. And then we also have seen not only officially uh, African government uh, really champion. Uh, a lot about this uh, African should be included. And also we have seen this NGO levels, not governmental uh, actors have been also very actively like to design some map and then to do some kind of suggestions to the Chinese government. This is a one of their uh, website they have designed about how African, uh, Africans' vision, Africans' ideas about uh, this BRR. So for me, if we look at uh, the whole incremental process of a BRR concept, we also understand that China is in a learning process about this BRR. And this, their concept about uh, I mean, the government, their concept about BRR definitely is growing. We cannot just using a kind of um, static idea to understand. Like in the beginning, we have to acknowledge uh, when Professor Wang is my senior colleague in our school, Chang Ping uh, uh, suggests the idea in uh, the Pacific Asian uh, area uh, that uh, China should go west, this so-called so go west journey uh, theories. And then later it started to grow into 2015, some specific area identify this kind of priority 
to cooperate with those partners. And then 2015, we have seen uh, more specifically uh, ideas about how to engage African countries. So we have seen such a, and of course, at this moment, uh, to not go against the established uh, order, what a world order, but to make a kind of a complementary relationship is very much emphasized by Xi Jinping himself and other leaders. So for my understandings, if we have seen African was included rather late or rather finally, but um, uh, there should, could be a, a question to ask why African was late. And uh, my uh, answer is uh, though last but not the least, the relationship, the function that African usually has played uh, ha can explain why this was late. Um, uh, yeah, these are some uh, evolution. 2017, during the second summit, we have seen uh, the, the official uh, claim that the African is a natural extension. And then we have uh, seen uh, numbers, quite a number of African countries become very active. And then I want to quote what Ambassador Liu Guizhin's idea. He was the, the first Chinese special envoy on African affairs. He said, uh, FOCAC is a smaller levels BRI already. It's a successful experiment. And uh, so basically, uh, we are talking about the whole China's uh, journey to be internationalized. In initially, if we look back, China's engagement with the world from a rebella in even till uh, the beginning uh, the, the beginning of the 1970s, uh, and then since 1980s start to uh, coming back to embrace the world, it, it, it has been rather used to be uh, bi bilateral to deal with any other uh, members and then rather unfamiliar with the multilateralism. Actually, if we look back the whole journey of FOCAC, China's African uh, cooperation, the forum, we could have said that how with Africa, with a, a continent that has a very strong solidarity basis with China, then uh, Chinese learn how to deal with the modern literalism. So that's in this way, uh, Ambassador Liu emphasized why FOCAC has been so important and then it, it doesn't, it, it didn't mean that African was forgotten. It just specifically uh, Africa has already a very good mechanism to work with China and then BRR simply have learned so much from uh, FOCAC. This was uh, Ambassador Liu, and then of, of course he now has re, uh, totally retired. And then this is uh, uh, the Madagascar uh, foreign minister back then, back into uh, 1998, when she firstly officially raised the idea that China should have a multilateral platform with African continent and then China used the more than a year to really seriously to investigate these possibilities among not only the ministries but also the whole government. So to this is also uh, this lady also has been very much credited in terms of uh, how uh, she contributed uh, to the China-African collaborations. And then so far we have seen, uh, I, I called the fast track since 2017 summit. Uh, excuse me, I, I, I didn't have enough time to translate everything into English, but uh, I, I will just brave about this idea. I think this is already familiar to everyone. Um, though uh, in the, 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 the second summit of a BRR, African officially included, but um, it was a 2018 in the FOCAC Beijing summit. Again, 
um, African, how to uh, the uh, Africans' own agenda 2063. Uh, their vi vision can be synchronized with China's BRR as well as uh, a FOCAC uh, was officially um, uh, uh, suggested. And also started from this time, we have seen how uh, different African countries start to uh, synchronize their own country's vision with Chinese government. Now we, we haven't seen all the partners uh, join the memorandum, already done that, but uh, slightly we have seen this kind of a one country, one route already has been implemented, ha has been designed and implemented. So uh, in uh, with different countries, different uh, way to collaborate has been trying to identify it. And of course, uh, to identify a good uh, project is also the mo main uh, things. And uh, for now, um, we have seen so many um, very active partners in terms of a BRR. And then um, um, there are also very uh, interesting uh, a project that uh, has been identified as a kind of a BRR project. And then interestingly, even um, as other uh, continents or other important uh, partners, uh, NDRC still the main uh, channel to coordinate this collaboration with uh, uh, about a BRR project. But uh, African, Africa is different in the way that uh, NDRC only officially share such a kind of a position. And it does uh, have a, make a kind of a mechanism so-called three banks, one uh, insurance company trying to go together to make sure there's a financial mechanism to uh, support Africa's uh, BRR. But FOCAC is the main coordinator, uh, even for this so-called synchronizing FOCAC with BRR. This is the differences. And then my understanding is Africa has uh, this uh, as a uh, FOCAC platform so well, so uh, well uh, unfolded in many ways. Like uh, if you look at uh, its uh, sub forum, we can count so many from uh, different sectors and also different kind of a social culture element, uh, youth, women, uh, people to people and the media and also uh, local government, municipal government. So all this are, 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 are FOCAC um, arms already uh, doing so many different things for the, uh, to promote bilateral cooperation. And then I think it also have shown the Chinese leaders how well it uh, operated, that's why um, we have seen FOCAC is still the main channel. And uh, if we look at the whole China-African collaboration at this moment, the main idea has been emphasize the quality. If in the beginning we have seen it's a kind of a very rough growing tendency, but since BRR, since it has been included, the quality has been the main uh, ideas, including the green ideas and then other sustainable way to uh, promote. And then also we have seen this economic collaborations go deeper. Not only we have seen from uh, uh, infrastructure perspective, like in the beginning is a turnkey, uh, this kind of uh, we co cooperate, and now we have seen more this kind of a management uh, tendencies, and of course um, uh, the special economic zone has been the very uh, fast developed areas. I will talk more about this economic <clears throat> area later. So for me, in terms of idea shift. Uh, Africa has played uh, a, a very important role 
and also China-Africans collaboration has been showing the whole world, specifically to the bigger powers, that Africa is not a place that waiting for you to 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 save it, and Africa is a big market. This kind of a sea change. This is what I quote from the former. Um, uh, foreign minister from Britain that he said uh, he, uh, African can be rediscovered as a market due to China Africa example and this is a forecast uh, the the evolution I don't have time to go specifically uh, but uh, basically I want to re-emphasize that land space landscape has been changed so much in terms of uh, what FOCAG has bring. But let's say what we are can bring something new, something different to um, FOCAG. <clears throat> and then of course, we all familiar with this uh, McKinsey report about 10,000 uh, Chinese company and also those, uh, the Afrobarometer uh, they are they are they are uh, statistic. It it looks everything is good, but what is missing is still the social and cultural mutual understanding between the two sides is still uh, very much lack of. <clears throat> and then uh, 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 the second one is the qualified human resource on the ground in terms of economic co collaborations and for the people. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to ask you to wrap up. Uh, it's okay. already 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So if we look at all those numbers, those statistics, uh, of course, the the people-to-people -people exchange has been improving. And then the uh, official uh, African vision now has been changing along with this BRR uh, period of time. And of course, uh, if we talk about people to people exchange mechanism, we have seen lots of uh, this kind of official effort, how uh, to emphasize and then as an idea change, I also want to show, I have done some of this research about how uh, I call it a socialization of a BRR. So it means how Chinese different sectors from public sector to uh, civil, to different NGO or civil society, they all started to move and then also go to African continent. So I have to jump all this to uh, trying to uh, coming to uh, just uh, Hiron, please give me another second, uh, a, a minute for me to uh, to talk a little bit about uh, the SEZs. I wanted to use uh, two cases about Zambia. Zambia, of course, is not a surprise, specifically to Hiron and Barry. Uh, they have done their pioneers for writing uh, Zambia as a specific country that uh, due to the Tanzam Railway uh, already enjoying the special position receiving the first batches of Chinese capital investment. And then of course we have seen this SEZ and then how it crossed so many different sectors, even like this uh, uh, wine and then uh, the, uh, the, the I, I want to also uh, uh, use some uh, uh, companies last year, I visited how they been uh, like, uh, uh, this is a, a very, uh, it, it, it's a, a, a private company, but the investment uh, comes uh, with uh, uh, 10,000, no, uh, let's say 100 million Chinese, uh, um, no, 100 million uh, US dollar. So a very, very big investment from a, a private company. This is also part of it. It's, uh, um, this is uh, tiles and then it's already created a very big uh, market and then they are targeting the whole African continent because of, uh, uh, they heard about this uh, uh, African continental free trade uh, agreement is going to be established. And another case, just very, very quick, Uganda. 
Agenda also is uh, uh, designing its 27 uh, special economic zone. Uh, last year, we have seen how they started to produce uh, CPU and the uh, smartphone. And the, the, this is Uganda's uh, government organization promoting this. And also we have seen how many Chinese companies, private companies, and uh, with the uh, provincial, different provincial uh, collaborations, like this one is from Liaoning province. And I have been following another one from Hunan province. They are doing the similar uh, kind of a collaborations. So for me, um, there are so many uh, different uh, ways we can see that the BR have, has brought uh, something new, like uh, uh, promoting people, promoting that African uh, has such a big potential for China. And then also due to Chinese government uh, push, also social sectors, the NGOs, they are coming out. For me, if there is no this kind of a BRR bigger concept, people won't uh, have a change their mindset about those negative views of Africa and also sectors, uh, specifically the um, business, the private sectors, they won't be able to flood into Africa. So uh, in um, Lusaka, uh, just uh, within a year's time, I've, I have seen very, very big changes due to uh, China's new investment, even the landscape, we can see that. So these are all the, uh, the things I want to say. Within China, there is a socialization happened, and then it's a kind of what I call the idea shift. Uh, I, I am very happy uh, to listen to your comment and um, questions. I have to stop here. Thank you, Hyrun, for your organization. Thank you. Thank you, Haifang, for the presentation. So now we have five minutes for Q&A. Um, already there is one online in the um, Q&A um, box. Um, this is a question from Ryan, Brian Robinson. Uh, let me just sort of briefly state what, what the question is. Uh, basically, he's asking what distinguishes the BRI from other Chinese investment and interventions in Africa? Uh, of course, uh, uh, the uh, BRR has money, <laughs> has uh, the special, I mentioned the several, uh, several uh, banks and also the Sinoshore, this uh, mechanism. But uh, we have a saying, I also think this is a kind of a, um, uh, socialization uh, or you you can name it in other ways uh, like uh, different uh, uh, municipal or provincial government they are intervening they are bringing more monies new monies so they are uh, how to say maybe we can differentiate the government the central government mechanism from how uh, uh, municipal but i like the word yesterday one scholars called bandwagon this is really just those kind of a um, process uh, we can see more and more joining different actors are joining including private um, investment and then uh, I have been lately uh, following uh, green uh, or uh, renewable energy investment. Uh, those uh, a big group of uh, uh, companies, they have shown me how they are trying to organize some consortium to conquer those culture uh, challenges. But of course, for them, money never is a problem. There is, it's just a kind of, a, they need a knowledge, they need a, a kind of platform. Once ever, uh, there is a, such a government um, flag uh, already set up there, and then they just feel safe. So this is a kind of, a, for me, uh, it's a hard to say th this is not a BRR. This is a, another BRR. Even some private company, they fully use everything from themselves, but they are very happy that to say, now Uganda or Zambia is a BRR country. And then so we sort of also share this kind of honor to invest in this country. So for me, uh, the support may not directly 
coming from government in a different levels, but uh, spiritually, they kind of uh, they share this kind of a momentum. That's uh, my uh, answer. I hope I didn't confuse you. <laughs> okay, uh, there's still uh, two two questions. Uh, one is coming from uh, Professor Liu. Uh, no, sorry, Prof, uh, Ye Ming. Uh, the question is, does China do public opinion surveys on Chinese capital? Did public opinion shift after COVID? I'm going to give you two questions and you can answer them very briefly. So that's one question. And there is another question coming from um, myself, um, which is among African countries or any country, developing country, if they want to become BRI country, uh, what, uh, what, might be what make them qualify for a BRI country. Um, so that's that. Yeah. Thank you to Professor Ye and then to Hyrong to your wonderful questions. Uh, to Professor Ye, I, I think definitely people has a need uh, to understand uh, where our capital goes, be it national or private. And then uh, people do follow. So if you can uh, follow the, the, the media, you easily can catch up. And of course, about to invest in Africa, it's also varied kind of opinions. So we can also uh, chase that. And about uh, uh, the, the COVID, I think uh, generally, at least uh, during this period of time uh, for my uh, interview, mostly of course, online interviews. And then the people start to look at Africa more and they start to uh, think Africa is more important for uh, Chinese investors. That that's has uh, due to U.S., due to the mortalities of other areas, and due to the kind of a, a long-term solidarity feelings between the two uh, sides. Uh, to Hyrong, for your questions, I think it's hard to give a criteria. I don't have a, an official answer for you, uh, but if uh, I look at the whole um, evolution, I didn't say China has a very uh, clear and a very hard uh, criteria for uh, each African country. I think the willingness is important. And then since 2018, they officially already uh, announced that every the whole African continent is specifically represented by AU could be already a partner for a uh, African, uh, so for BRR, then it shows, uh, it, it, it embraces everyone to join. But how to implement, I, as I said in the, my uh, talk, uh, country levels, how to make sure one country has one specific route has been discussing. And then it's uh, mainly from Chinese uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the African uh, department, they are working a lot trying to help with uh, uh, designing this kind of a route. 